<laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna work with Paula Vogel. She is, uh, I've, she's just been like my teacher as I've been teaching myself to be a playwright um, the last couple years. And um, she is someone who really, I, I feel like, fits this event in an interesting way because all of her plays, when I read interviews, were in response to plays that she felt like were incomplete. Uh, usually silencing the female voice is, is in one way or another is what she feels like. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm uh, channeling Desdemona, a play about a handkerchief in particular, which uh, is, is ostensibly her response to Othello uh, by this guy Shakespeare. Uh, however, uh, when you read the director's note, it is, um, it was written as a tribute, i.e. ripoff, to the infamous play Shakespeare the Sadist by Wolfgang Bauer which I finally read after I had written my whole play and uh, worked with some actors on it. Um, and it has a beheading and just crazy sex stuff that a uh, fellow would have been upset with Desdemona for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this play that Paula Vogel wrote, uh, it, 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 re it uh, fleshes out the female characters who are entirely one-dimensional in Shakespeare's play. And uh, Desdemona, as it turns out, was sleeping with everyone. Um, that's, that was the choice that Paula Vogel made. And um, if you know Othello, he was going crazy at the idea that, that uh, his, his wife was making him a cuckold. And uh, Paula Vogel plays with the idea that that was the case in spades. So um, I'm going to first uh, read a scene from Desdemona with my friend Brandon, who's uh, a former member of the Cal Slam team. And uh, then I want to uh, show you a play I wrote and I'll introduce that briefly after we read this. This is uh, Brandon Young. <laughs> Emilia, have you ever deceived your husband, Iago? That's a good one. Of course not, miss. I'm an honest woman. <laughs> <laughs> what does honesty have to do with adultery? Every honest man I know is an adulterer. Have you ever thought about it? What is there to be thinking about? It's enough trouble once each Saturday night than to be looking for it. I'd never cheat. Never. Not for all the world, I wouldn't. The world's a huge thing for so small a vice. Not my world, thank you. Mine's tidy and neat, and I aim to keep it that way. Oh, the world. Our world's narrow and small, I'll grant you. But there are other worlds. Worlds that we married women are never meant to see. Amen. And don't need to see, I should add. If you've never seen the world, how would you know? Women are clad in purda, we decent, respectable matrons, from the cradle to the altar to the shroud, bridled with linen, blinded with lace, these very walls of purda. I don't know what this thing called purda means, but if it stands for dressing up nice, I'm all for it. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw my husband, and I caught a glimpse of his skin, and oh, how I thrilled. I thought, aha, a man of a different color. From another world and planet, I thought, if I marry this strange, dark man, I can leave this narrow little Venice with its whispering piazzas behind. I can escape and see other worlds. But under that exotic facade was a porcelain white Venetian. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Venice. I don't understand why Madame's all fired up to catch Cypress Sip and the exotic claps. Of course you don't understand, but I think Bianca does. She's a free woman. A new woman who can make her own living in the world, who scorns marriage for the lie it is. I don't know where Madame's getting this new woman hogwash, but no matter how you dress up a cow, she's still got udders. Bianca's the eldest one of six girls with teeth so horsey she could clean them with the hoof pick, and so simple she has to apply the trade she does. That is what your Miss Bianca is. Bianca is nothing of the sort. She and I share something common in our blood, the desire to know the world. I lie in the blackness of the room at her establishment, on sheets that are stained and torn by countless nights, and the men come into that pitch black room, men of different sizes and smells and shapes, with smooth skin, with rough skin, with scarred skin, and they spill their seed into me, Amelia, <laughs> seed from a thousand lands, passed down through generations of ancestors, with genealogies that cover the surface of the globe, and I simply lie there in the darkness, taking them all into me. I close my eyes, and in the dark of my mind, Oh, how I travel. Get out of here.
Desdemona looks up to the person who runs the whorehouse, and Paula Vogel's uh, reworking of Othello it is fantastic, in my opinion. Um, I wrote, I, I was, when I got asked to do this, I was on my way to LA to see a uh, production of Taming of the Shrew that had BDSM in it, and it was just really weird and cool, and um, so I don't know that I normally would have picked Desdemona as the Paula Vogel work I would have worked with, but it, it just seemed like a really cool idea to try to do something similar with Taming of the Shrew. Um, one thing just to throw out there about Taming of the Shrew is it's, it's considered a, a play within an incomplete play because he, he has this induction at the beginning where um, there's, there's a beggar and uh, the beggar gets abducted by, home, by a, a lord and they're, they're just kind of pranking him and, and uh, tra trying to convince him that he's a lord and, um, and then he, they, sh they put on Taming, for the, Taming of the Shrew for him. Um, then they don't come back to it at the end of Taming of the Shrew. The thing is, Taming of the Shrew was uh, written, was stolen from a play called Taming of a Shrew, which does come back to the Christopher Sly story. And his, his epiphany he has after watching Taming of the Shrew is, oh, I'm so inspired, I'm going to go tame my woman. And I, I think that, that, first of all, because Shakespeare sh changed absolutely nothing from the play he stole from, and, but secondly, because it's just an utterly misogynistic word, um, it's, it's fair to say that if he had finished the storyline, it would have been the exact same way. And so um, I, I give you the taming of Christophero Sly. <laughs> this is, by the way, this is Paniota uh, as uh, a socialite in San Francisco. Uh, this is Matt, her uh, personal assistant, and uh, Maya, a homeless man. <laughs> okay. A sleeping bag and a wine bottle, weather trench coat and a Burger King crown by the entrance of the SF Hilton, a homeless man stands up shakily to address everything. I'll have a quarter pounder with sleep. Ah. <laughs> uh. I used to have dreams too, and then your motorcycle got a sound system loud enough to hear over the fuck you engine. <laughs> and seventies rock anthems. The seventies were lousy like your face, man. Don't you know any? Hey, what day? Is... No, what day of the week? Yeah, there's a reason to yell. It's called the Lusty Lady. She closes her legs for good on a Tuesday, so if it's a Thursday, man, I know I missed her. I miss you, Lusty. The homeless man passes out as a wealthy socialite and his personal assistant approach. Ah, what a night at the theater! Ah, uh, yes, sir. So nice of you to make you take me on my day off, sir. None of this, sir, uh, rubbish, Siegfried. I'm simply your Roy on the occasion to a bath. <laughs> yes, sir, Roy. But since that is your actual name, would it be okay if we called me by mine, just while we're about it? Not Roy, sir, nor Sir Roy. Oh, that would be dignified. Tis simply Roy, Siegfried, my city. I tell you, tonight, tonight is made of the magic that bends concrete and glass. Now skip all this sidewalk as we reach our Hilton suite, not as my assistant, well, as my assistant, in sweet magic. <laughs> you really love that Shakespeare, huh, Roy? That Shakespeare? Oh, for shame, little city. <laughs> Why, if Taming of the Shrew was a symphony, twas the rains and wind bespeaking that we have all felt unto the ocean tides. Why, the sound of nature herself, if twas symphony. As theater, twere Shakespeare, the one and only bar. Well, uh, ACT probably did a good job. Their stage is big, I had to turn my head a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Was ever a man so plagued as I? Ah, Baptista Minola! I just said a line. Uh, the words were poetical, too. Uh, but that's all I really followed most of the time. I guess I like the sounds, like a symphony. Yeah. My friend, tonight we witnessed magic. Just agree. Yes, we did magic. Now we do magic. <laughs> Not falling again, Sir Roy, sorry. You will soon enough, Siggy. Close your unseeing eyes, Siegfried. Check. That man sleeping at our hotel's door. A man, Sir Roy. You didn't notice. A homeless man rolls onto his stomach, yelling in his sleep. Fuck you, bouncer! I'm here for the bouncing. Boobs! <laughs> <laughs> no, really can hear a minute, though. I know. He's been there just. 
said the entirety of us stay in San Francisco. Though his bowels do vacate, he notices not, but for the added warmth, which I wager the swine finds more blessing than I bet he squishes around in it. That's disgusting, but uh, Roy, <laughs> that loud homeless guy, you mean? Aye, when he's not sleeping, he be loud as we did clap our second bows this very evening at the Earthra. <laughs> I know not what I means, Roy, and I don't know what that guy's screaming about all the time either. And neither does he, Siggy. Yes, it means yes in Shakespeare, by the way. The bum screams in Shakespeare. <laughs> Maybe he should be your Siggy. Mehaps I be Miss Cass, I'm just fooling. Aye, <laughs> but you fool well, Siegfried. <laughs> Why, I wager he wouldn't know any better if he were to wake in my silken room. A bit of kimono, Roy. Aye, and above the silken sheets of our hilton sweet bed, neath a blanket of rose petals. And instead of the furious bustle of sidewalk and street traffic, his sight returneth to the soothing vision of his devout wife. Is he married? To you! Sir, sir, you jest too far. Is that how you say it? Roy, Siegfried, I won't tell you again. And that mess knows, knows, knows no more of his past than we do. He knows he was banned from the lusty lady. Ah, and from the kindle come in the fire. You do know him, Siegfried. Homeless man talking in his sleep. For? Ha! I said. And what other intimate innards have you gleaned? Well, out turns. You said he squishes in shit, hey, Roy? No, nay, he be transformed. And know of him what all obedient, what Catherine hath learned at the end of Taming of the Shrew. I didn't really follow it. Was she the shrew? Or what's a shrew, anyway? <laughs> An imbecile by any other name would smell as sweet. It's like a rodent, but with less fangy teeth. But by the end of the tale, she's become his dove, more than lovely Bianca. For Kate, Catherine loves him. Siegfried. Merely remind him the ways you obey his every touch and desire, and when he doth reciprocate your advance. Sir! Roy! Siegfried, you don't have to sex the man we've engendered out of that. Not to worry. I'm just trying to follow along, really, Roy. Good man! See, I'm calling you a man now. Magically. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> But as a woman, understand. You will tell him when he asks who you are. Say, Mrs. Sly, of course, curtsying like so. Oh, very good, Siegfried. Mrs. Sly. Right you are, Mrs. Sly, devoted wife to Christophero, who passed out drinking too much wine at the intermission of Taming of the Shrew at the Theatra. Theatra, huh? <laughs> Scene two, the socialites Hilton suite. They have dressed the passed out homeless man in the socialite's theater robe and laid him upon the king-sized bed. The socialite is sprinkling him with rose petals, which is not creepy. The assistant stands a bit away from the bed in an evening gown, nervously practicing Catherine's monologue from the end of Taming of the Shrew. Ready, Siegfried? <laughs> Catherine. Catherine it is! You are! Let's see, let's see. Let us play! <laughs> yes, sir. Roy, sorry. Know what? Call me Baptiste. <laughs> Whatever, sir. Go ahead. Theatra! Theatra! <laughs> what the fuck? <coughs> fuck you! <laughs> this man chokes on a rock spell. <coughs> Where am I? Speak, yucky scum! Why, the Hilton, sirrah, you're home for the time being. I do live at the Hilton, loud and lovely like the lady I lost. What quiet shit pot is this? What's that smell? Air conditioning, sirrah, and, and rose petals, of course, your favorite after a blackout. That smells terrible. Air conditioning, you say? Aye, or if you require heat, I might simply light your complimentary fireplace. Or perhaps some room service? Soup to warm you from within? What would you please, my lord? Please? Please. What's in room service soup? Food not bomb serves bean or chicken noodle, depending on the weather. But what would it be in air conditioning? What soft climate is this anyways? 
70 degrees, Sarah. Your favorite. <laughs> uh, I miss my lady. But I'm right here, sweetie. <laughs> you are a vision. <laughs> Thank you, dear. So glad you revived. Well played, good Siegfried. <laughs> the fuck's with him? We are both just so glad you came to. <laughs> you fell in the theater! Did I? I mean, watching cars and yelling at the yuppie scum? Some suit swung. That it? When I was sleeping? Or is this the dream? Oh, no, dear Christophe, but you did lay drunk. You fell, my only lord. Oh. Well played. What is, what is this Christro lord? Are we very acquainted, baby? Why Christro? Oh, poor Christophe, Sly. Why, that is your good name, and I, Mrs. Sly, tired from my love and devotion, though no less devoted or loving, because you fall almost every play we go to. Which be frequent as you are on American Conservatory's board. Who the fuck are you, though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm your assistant, Sarah. I, it will all come back when we finish the play. Oh, it's true. You always remember when I read you what you miss. For you are her only bliss. <laughs> Extraordinary, Siggy, by the way. Well played again. Oh, thanks, boss. I mean, boy, assistant. Thanks to my husband's assistant. So loyal. <laughs> oh, okay, just give me that damn room service soup. And something to drink. And Roy, and the Roy can bounce so I can see you. <laughs> I bet you like the smell of this 70 degrees, don't you, fragile? Uh, what do I call you? Just dear, or... Pray when we play hunter hunted neath the road petals, my slide. Well, damn play! I do like the sound of that, I think, but you! Shut up! Aye. Aye. That means yes in Shakespeare, love. Now sit back and enjoy Catherine's words from page 150. Well, you fainted, Lord. Aye. I'll make it quick, love. I'd rather play that hunting game. <laughs> that would be great. Aye, magical! And here's your seat now, Christophero. Actually, I haven't made the call yet. I'll do that now. For room service. Room service soup! And cheap booze! Extra cheap, my noble ruffian. <laughs> Fetch the soup, Assistant Roy. We will not wait for them to bring it. Fetch! Go ye! You would have me! And yo, he would have me. That is what you wanted. But well, fine, get out with you in the room. <laughs> Does the swine speak? You should be getting my room service soup. It's 70 damn degrees. I can fix that. Let me just adjust the thermostat. The soup? Fine. The socialite exits to fetch soup. What a dick. Excuse Roy, sir. <laughs> he is a dick, though. <laughs> <laughs> See how your judgment returns, wise Christopher Sly. Let me revive you a little more. Reading from the Shakespeare. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper. That's me, baby. Thy head. Ray. Thy sovereign. <laughs> One that cares for thee, and for thy maintenance commits his body. You know I do, dear. Such duty as the subject owes the prince, even such a woman oweth to her husband. Come here, damn it, Lusty. What is it with you and the lust wench? That's Lady Lusty, the finest strip club, uh, <clears throat> gentleman's establishment, and this elitist wasteland shit stain. We're just passing through San Francisco, dear look. You caught your dear little wife, pray, thing. <laughs> How'd I get here? Who, who are you? I can't think at all is air conditioning. <laughs> oh, Sly, when I finish the Shakespeare, you'll be well again. That's how it always... Oh, uh, um, Sly? Slurs, slob, Sir Richard Dick Breath would be my preferred royal title, I suppose, but not Sly. And I am no woman. That is all I know. The only thing I know, even if she's not closed and banned from the lust. Lady, not witch. <laughs> yeah, you know her? The young gentleman's establishment. The only one, one and only, she'll do whatever you want. If she want it, taught me all about consent. My union wench. What's a consent? <laughs> it be yes or no, and nothing till you know. <laughs> I remember when I memorized it. They were women with a Y. Wind, man. <laughs> wow. So what happened? I tried to... I just admired him so much, I just felt like coming at the window did not express how inspired I was by the way they stick it to the man, you know? Yeah. I mean, I see all these disrespectful, do what I say, disgraces to my gender, and how they just move away and dance for someone who's maybe spanking it. Sure, maybe even not, but I always respected him. 
how they were powerful in the world, especially doing what they do no, when no one thinks they're worth anything more than their physical cool mechanics. You know, I used to flip burgers at the Burger King. Really? How's that pay? I mean, uh, but why'd they ban you? Ah, it pays all right. They, well, she hated, <laughs> she hated my homage. I said I would have asked, but I wanted them all to be surprised. Oh, why do I never understand? I ran past the bouncer because he knew I knew the consent motto, so I caught him totally unawares, and under my trench coat, I was in a dress, even nicer than that one. And I sway up to the window, and I put the lipstick in my trench coat Lipstick? Uh, do you have it on you? Yeah. Uh, you could use some, honey. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry we tricked you into going inside. With an air conditioning. Who the fuck's that Roy? Yeah, I mean, my boss. What's your name? I don't know. Oh, come here, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. The assistant runs into the homeless man's arms as the socialite returns with a bowl of room service soup he almost drops trying to size up the odd dynamic in the room. Seek <laughs> freeze? What if I ask my sex? I'm very disappointed in you. I quit. Quit. Qu he quits. Ha! She. She. What works for you now? I'm homeless. Nobody works for me. I don't even work for me. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> I think. Yes. I think so too, Roy. End of play. <laughs>